the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you came in through the parish hall or through the glass doors tonight, you might have seen Santa's dashboard. You know what I'm talking about? It's a video screen, and the program, which is on the internet, is tracking Santa's progress around the world. Um, Colin Glantz did it on our way in a few minutes ago and said that Santa's due to arrive and ride about 1 a.m. You'll be in time to catch him, I think. Um, But I mention it only because when I came in earlier this afternoon, um, Santa uh, was just above Ethiopia. He was was crossing over Africa, and I I couldn't resist the opportunity to get a a little bit closer to the map um, because my son, Kirsten and Amanda's brother, is serving with the Peace Corps in Africa right now, and Santa would have just been, oh, I don't know, about 500 miles north (laughs) of where Edmund is. Edmund is in a tiny village in Mozambique called MoMA. Bet you haven't heard of it, right? Um, At the the northern end of Mozambique, toward the Tanzania border, he's in the Nampula province. And the village is really tiny. Given the kind of tools that we have now, of course, I've gone on Google Maps um, and tried to find him. (laughs) or at least to get a feeling for the village. And in spite of all this wonderful technology, I am completely stymied, and I I can't see where he is. All I can see is that it it seems impossibly remote. Jesus was from a town um, that we would have considered impossibly remote. The archaeological digs in the area where he was raised in the Middle East have not stopped, and there have actually been sort of new new findings over the last few years. Um, The town where his family lived in Nazareth, um, barely 70 households, maybe 300 people. And in the archaeological digs that they've carried out, they can't find any evidence of a marketplace, nor can they find any evidence of luxury, no wine jugs, no jewelry, um, nothing that would indicate that anybody there had any means at all. And they're also sort of inferring from what they could see there um, that this was not a money economy. Um, People, everybody had to grow something in that village to live. Even though Jesus' father, Joseph, his earthly father, Joseph, was a carpenter, that doesn't mean that they had any means, because artisans didn't make any money in a village that was that poor. Also, Nazareth is really out of the way. Uh, The nearest city of any kind is Sephora, Sephora, Um, which did have some wealthy people and a bit of a cultural elite, but that's an hour's walk away from Nazareth, and it's, well, you wouldn't go to Nazareth. There wouldn't be a reason to go there. It reminds me of a small town in the Diocese of New York we've been getting to know lately, um, Pine Plains. I don't know if you're familiar with Pine Plains up up the way. Um, the people in Pine Plains are feeling kind of depressed because there doesn't seem to be any reason for anybody to go there, right? It's, there's no Mohawk in Pine Plains. There's no um, tourist destination. There's no historic site. Uh, these towns, they shrink. They, they begin to feel like nowhere. So Jesus came from a family um, who lived in nowhere, nowheresville. And um, they were kind of nobody, if you will. And they were very, very poor. Uh, It was popular just a few years ago to say, well, no, no, no. Now, Jesus was a middle class boy. Had to have had a good synagogue education, probably could read. After all, his father was a carpenter. Um, Actually, not so much, not so much. They were probably 
near the bottom 10% of the economic scale of the day. Very poor. The only people poorer than Jesus' family would have been the beggars. Um, and people who, well, the word is hard to say, but would, could, would have been considered expendable. Um, there wasn't much further down to go, is the point I'm trying to make. If you're at the bottom of the top 90%, in the top of the bottom 10, if you will, um, there wasn't much further down to go. Why do we care? Well, I care for two reasons tonight. One is that I'm thinking about Edmund and how remote that village is. And I need a God who can get there, whatever that takes. I also know that for many people, life is very hard for whatever reason, whether it's by reason of the economy or depression or addiction or divorce, or cancer, or just one of those intractable, insoluble problems that dogs you and your family for generations, and you just, you really need a God who can go there. You need a God who can get there, and who will not shrink at going great distances on your behalf. Whether the distance is from rich to poor, or from west to east, or from high to low, you need to know that your God can get there. In the birth of Jesus, in the Christ child, we get an emphatic message from heaven that God can get here. God can get here. Talk about, it's a breathtaking movement of downward mobility, isn't it? If the, the son of the king of the universe, if you will, decides to be born in the ancient Near East. I mean, why not Egypt? Why not Jerusalem? Why not be the son of the priestly class? Why not be the son of a person of means? Why not have a little comfort? Um, why not get a first-rate education? It's the son of God, after all. But the, the story tells us that that wasn't the plan that the Son of God needed to be as close to us as he could possibly get, and that for us to believe that he meant it, he needed to get close to the poorest of us, the least of us, the lowest of us. Now, you may be having a good year and saying, well, that's not me. <laughs> I'm doing fine and I'm happily not identified with the lowest or the least this year. But in every life, some suffering comes. In every life, some trouble. We all bust our shins on problems that we thought we'd be able to solve. It happens to every one of us. And we need a God who won't walk away when it gets that hard. We need a God who doesn't move away from us when we fail the important exam, when we lose the job, when we have that meltdown in the waiting room or the emergency room at the hospital, in those moments that embarrass us, that frighten us, that trouble our families, we need to know that we have a God who will not walk away. How better to tell us than to entrust himself in human form into the hands of one Mary, one Joseph of Nazareth, the village called Nowhere, to be poor, to eat the bread that Mary herself baked from flour she had ground, from wheat that she had taken, to wear the clothes that she had sewn, from wool that she had spun, to grow up among the poor, whose very living was being taken by them every day, either by the Romans or by the temple tax or by that wealthy elite in Sephora, to be among them, 
to make it all right to go there. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Isn't it strange? You know, whenever a child is born, it can truly be said that someone is there who never was before. There's something about a birth of a child that changes everything in a way that nothing else does. It doesn't matter that so many children are being born year after year. I was tempted to look out how many were born today, right? It's a very common event, and yet, every time a child is born, it can be said that something new has happened and that someone is with us on the earth who never was there before. Because of this, Every time a child arrives, there's a chance for something new. Every time, there's a possibility that life can start again. Every time the child is born, there's just that shot that this one might be the one who changes everything. But we believe that Jesus is that child who changes everything that the most helpful thing that could be said to a world full of woe, whether in the village of Nazareth or in the city of Jerusalem or on Wall Street or in Washington or in MoMA in Mozambique or outside that troubled embassy in South Sudan, the most helpful, helpful, hopeful thing that can be said is that this child has been born and something new is going on. God comes close, so close, into the messiest, poorest, most mistaken, most difficult parts of our lives and says, there's something new. There's something more that can happen here. As Martin Marty once said, we don't know enough about the future to be utterly pessimistic. That's putting it in the most minimal way. But the happy way to say it is simply this. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Prince of Peace. 